All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to get started on our next session. Thank you so much for coming. If you are here to learn training that's lit, uh, I'm not sure if I said that right. Is anyone born in post 2000? Did, am I using that term correctly? Okay. Training that's lit, engaging Generation Z learners. If you're looking for that, <laughs> then you're in the right place. Uh, and I'm going to turn the mic over to our presenters. Thanks very much. Thanks, Zach. Here, this is for you. Got it. Okay. How are we doing on audio? Do I need to use my trainer voice? Is that coming through enough? More? <laughs> Just summon like the spirit of two trainers. Do we have more volume on this? Or am I going to need to shout? Who should I be looking at? Okay. I'm fine? Okay. Great. All right, everybody, welcome. As, uh, as Zach said, if you're not sure what the term lit means, or you have an idea but can't believe Dev Lauren would let us talk about it, you're in the right place. Okay. Um, and that's what, uh, and so that's what we're here to talk about today. So I'm Misty Harding. I'm with eLearning Brothers. We're going to present a showcase today of products that we were able to create with, our, with one of our key partners, Sigma Chi Fraternity. So this is Brian Wilson. He is the Director of Leadership and Education and Leadership Programs at Sigma Chi. And we're going to be able to show you four products today. So we're going to do a little bit of setup, but then we have gazillions of screenshots that we want to show you from solutions that we've designed for Generation Z. For those of you who aren't familiar, Generation Z or Gen Edge are the people that were born after the millennials. We always hear about the millennials constantly. Um, but speaking as an older millennial, things are changing. <laughs> There's a new generation that's coming and they have different expectations. And in the training industry, we have to start adjusting to that now. And so now as a millennial, I'm gonna to have to learn how to cater to a younger generation than myself. These are such fun programs because um, as e-learning designers, we had such fun conversations on our team as we went through these products, trying to come up with ideas that were lit and making fun of ourselves. And we're like, are we even cool anymore? You know, we had to call younger brothers and sisters and ask them how Tinder worked. And uh, so it definitely made us feel old, but we're happy that you're here. Um, we have some cool things to show you in ways that we just helped to make this training not only more relevant visually, um, but also contextually something that they felt that they could relate to and that was built for them, rather than them having to conform to what really is a changing standard in our industry. Um, learners just don't want what we have produced historically. Um, so, so we'll jump into it, but I want Brian to have a chance to introduce himself. Thanks, Misty. Um, as Misty said, my name is Brian Wilson. I'm the Director of Education and Leadership Programs for Sigma Chi Fraternities International Headquarters, which is in Evanston, Illinois, just north of Chicago. Um, my team works on uh, the creation and implementation of all of the educational programming that we put out to uh, our undergraduates across the country. Uh, I thought I'd give you just a brief overview of what Sigma Chi Fraternity is as an organization and what led us to start working with eLearning Brothers. Um, Sigma Chi Fraternity was founded in 1855 at Miami University in Oxford, Ohio. Since then, we've expanded to uh, over 240 campuses across the United States and Canada. Um, our core values are friendship, justice, and learning, and our core mission is to be the preeminent uh, leadership development organization in the collegiate landscape. Now, that's not something that you might not necessarily equate with uh, the fraternity and sorority lifestyle that you hear about in the news, and we're well aware of the publicity that we've received, and uh, we are trying to do something about that, and that's uh, where our online and e-learning and in-person uh, workshop uh, development ideas started, uh, is that, uh, go ahead and next one. Uh, we realized that once somebody joined our organization, that since we were at 240 different member schools and 240 different campuses, people were getting 240 different experiences. Not everybody was getting the exact same or anywhere close to the same amount of uh, background about the fraternity, its history, its values, and what it really means to be a Sigma Chi and what's expected of you once you join our organization. Um, and so what our idea was is when somebody first joins, we need to hit them right away in their pledge ship period with uh, the right kind of education and training, um, 
that really spoke to all the things that I just mentioned that we knew that they weren't getting across the board at all of our member schools. Uh, what we decided we needed to do was come up with a standard way to introduce our pledges to the organization and that led to our Preparation for Brotherhood program which we started uh, developing in e-learning probably back in about 2014 or so. We got a very basic learning management system uh, that met our needs at the time. We recently switched but uh, uh, we just started in-house uh, using actually some of e-learning brothers templates creating uh, our own version of online e-learning uh, to give to all of our new members. It was at, at the beginning it was an eight-week program uh, with eight different um, blended learning uh, approach so we had an online section and then an in-person session that was uh, taught by one of our members at one of our member schools and what we really got caught up with in the first place was as we were standardizing everything uh, we were doing a lot of a lot of thought of can we do this can we create e-learning rather than is it any good and what we found out very quickly is that it wasn't uh, we didn't have anybody in-house that was really a curriculum design expert or an e-learning expert and what our uh, our online programs began to be was really just a lot of PowerPoint slides with some videos a little bit of narration and they were really really painfully boring um, we started this program with uh, a pilot test of 50 of our member schools and you know word got out that this was pretty boring stuff and we actually uh, uh, introduced or decided to announce the full launch to everybody of this program without a whole lot of changes of the boring stuff at our summer uh, leadership workshop which is called uh, Balfour Leadership Training Workshop. Uh, every summer we have that in Bowling Green, Ohio. And our international president was up there talking about this e-learning and he was making it sound so great. He's a salesman by trade, that's what he does. And he was telling everybody how great it was, but they all knew that it was not any good. And our international president was literally booed off the stage at this summer conference. Uh, he had water bottles thrown at him. There were some choice words flying. It was a pretty amazing experience to, uh, to see and watch. And we still tell stories about that. And th that's how bad we knew it was. <laughs> but what to do about it. Um, what they really felt was that the training wasn't speaking, it, it wasn't, we were, they thought they were taking away their local traditions and their local history because they were doing it all on their own. So we needed to find a way to integrate some of those ideas uh, into what we were doing. And we started looking at some of the feedback we were getting, and this is where the title of the presentation comes from, is one of the, the free response comments we got was that this, uh, this program needs to be more lit. And we all had a good chuckle out of that. Uh, nobody in the office, again, really used that language, as Zach pointed out when he was introducing it to us. Are we using that word right? Um, and so we laugh about it, but then we realize that's a perfect synopsis of, we, of us not knowing what we were doing. Um, we're not speaking to this generation. The training's not speaking to them. Of course they hate it. Of course they, don't, they feel like we're taking stuff away from them because we're not using their language. We're not using graphics and video and games and interactive, it is literally sitting there clicking next, next. And it was so corporate and canned. And you know, I, we give lots of credit to our people that were doing this in-house because it was their first attempt at it. And you know, it was a learning experience for all of us. But um, what we realized very quickly was we needed help. We needed somebody that really knows how to speak to this generation, uh, somebody that has all of these things that we would, wanted to do, but we didn't have the time or the years that it would take to build this expertise or build the content and curriculum to uh, really speak to this generation. Uh, besides that, uh, we have a, a really grand plan about expanding um, what we're doing for our members in terms of making them uh, transformational leaders and really doing leadership development while they're uh, in college and a member of our fraternity. Uh, that's ongoing right now. There's a lot of big things coming in that and just the scale of it meant that there's no way that we could even hire enough people to do it ourselves and get it done in the, the time frame that we needed to get it done in. So uh, we took a look at outsourcing and uh, had a few different names. We sent out an RFP and it, Shocking no one, uh, most of the proposals that came back, the, we're looking at some of the, uh, 
the demos that the different companies were giving us, and it looked exactly like what did we pr produce, because they're used to producing training for larger corporations where the generations are older. It's a much older target demo. There aren't too many people that are really producing e-learning and training for people of this age. And when we spoke to e-learning brothers, what we got back was just absolutely amazing. Uh, they showed us some demos and some of the content they produced for some other people, some stuff that they had on the drawing board that they really wanted to uh, use for us, and uh, it's just been a fantastic partnership since then. Um, we like to say that whenever they come to us with an idea, we pretty much just tell them yes, because we know we don't know how to do this, and they really do, and they're knocking it out of the park with us. So I think that's, uh, I think that's where Misty comes in and is going to talk about some more about some of the things that, uh, that eLearning Brothers has done for us and can do for others. Yeah. Thank you, Brian. So um, when you guys come to DevLearn, you hear a lot about our templates. But what we don't always hear as much about is one of our premier services, which is custom e-learning development. So we have a team of very experienced professionals who we like to call an extra set of hands. So we can own an entire project, or we can do bits and pieces of your project. But either way, our goal, just like with, te with the templates product, is to help you look like a rock star, even if that's with customized e-learning. And that's what, we, that's what we really wanted to do for Sigma Chi. They've been such a great partner with us. They've been very trusting. Um, to go with our ideas, and we've been able to produce some products that I think you guys are going to love. So let's jump into it. Um, let's talk just a little bit about the modern Generation Z learner. So on the left, what you're seeing is what people are used to, and what people of previous generations are accepting of, whether it's in a collegiate experience or whether it's in a corporate experience. Now, you might be accepting of it, but you don't like it. Do you? Okay, we all hate it. I don't care when you were born. We all think it's awful. Um, but these guys are becoming a lot more demanding because their context is different. They've grown up differently. And they've had experiences and have been provided opportunities that we didn't have um, to learn in a social manner. These guys are very on demand. This is the YouTube generation. Like, I just want it just enough, just in time, just for me has never applied to any generation more than it applies to Generation Z. We do not want to sit through an hour of garbage. We'll do it, because mom and dad said we had to. But these guys are like, why? Um, this isn't my life. This isn't my experience. What are we doing? So they want something that's a lot more compelling, a lot more right-sized. They want it very accessible. They want things to be more social. Um, the engagement and immersion factor is high too, and we'll, we'll talk and show you some of the designs that we came up with. So here are some things that we're going to highlight, and I'm going to show you what we, how we built them into the products. Graphic novels was a theme set that we used uh, for one of the courses. We, in another course, used social media themes. Uh, we got some really good feedback about this because we let them use the poo emoji for their interactions, and they really liked it. I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, gamified interactions, we've been talking about this one quite a bit today, but they played alcohol cornhole um, to learn about the alcohol policies for the chapter. Um, and we have some additional examples of that. We also had a course where we did 3D characters and stories, and so that's one of the case studies we'll show you. We also were able to integrate some of their learning experience with their technology, so to carry their experience outside of the classroom by integrating with the technology that they use every day and helping it to keep it at the forefront of their mind. We also use digital magazines, so I'll show you an example of that. So several things throughout. We also have some memes in here, and um, <coughs> they're letting Gen Z, have you guys heard this? They're letting Gen Z name themselves. They're asking them, what do you want to be called? And um, a really big popular one with them is we want to be called Generation Meme. <laughs> so they're so very digital people. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to talk about is preparation for brotherhood. Brian, do you want to just give an introduction to what this course is about? And then I'm going to talk about how we treated it. Sure. Uh, preparation for brotherhood is our uh, pledge program. So it's uh, the very first course that they're exposed to once they join. Um, it used to be an eight-week program. We've cut it down to five, uh, where they get all of the background information about the fraternity's founding, its history, the founders itself and making connections to the core values of Sigma Chi um, through each one of the founders and then telling um, uh, you know, historical stories as well as how you relate that to modern day. That's one of the things that we knew we were missing initially was we can tell them all this stuff, but what does it mean to them now? It's great information. They love to soak that up, but how can they use the concepts we're teaching them and apply it to their daily life? Yeah, and I really think that's what was missing. People were looking at it and thinking, oh, history boring. 
And so we had to find a way to bring it to the here and now, but the history mattered. You know, it's so interesting just speaking as an outsider, Brian, you know, when you think about fraternities, there's a lot of things that come to mind. And the more that we've been able to get to know Sigma Chi and what they actually stand for, we're proud to be a partner with them in helping to bring their values and trust and integrity to life in modern day. <clears throat> because it's not about the typical fraternity experience. So what we did was we created virtual modern day characters, pledge brothers, that they could help them solve modern day problems with value-based decision, decision making. And the way that the course was set up, <clears throat> it was to incent precision. Zach, could I, Tom, could I get water? Just, is it? I'm trying to shout, but it comes with a price. And this was huge because in the past, we hadn't really put it on them to make decisions. Or, you know, as Brian and I were talking about, it was always something really extreme. Like, oh, someone's passed out. Should you call the ambulance or not? In this program, we get down to the more finite things. Like someone told you that they were going to pay you money and they didn't. What are you going to do about that? <clears throat> and how does that tie back to our values? There's also a 75% auto fail. So as they're having this experience and making decisions, if they continue to make decisions that aren't within that value set, they'll fail completely out of the program and have to start over. I don't know how much you guys have experimented with incenting precision in learning, but it's very powerful for capturing people's attention. That's a side note, we can talk about it later, but that's what we use here. On to the screenshots, the whole rest of this is screenshots. <clears throat> okay, here's preparation for brotherhood. These are our digital characters. So there's four of them. We tried to give them really detailed backgrounds that felt relatable. Um, so they all have different ages. They're from different places in the continental US. They have different majors and interests. And they also have different reasons that they wanted to pledge with Sigma Chi. Yeah, we actually had a lot of fun with this too, um, coming up with the different stories and backgrounds. This is something we want to carry through or all of our programs is using these same characters so they actually get an idea of who these characters are and know their personalities. So as they follow them through the different courses, um, they're going to be used to the same people and the same guys and they already know their personality and style. Yeah. And Brian's going to talk about the results a little bit later and how this is being received. But one of the things they talked about is, I really want to help my, my virtual pledge brothers. And in my everyday life, I still think about, you know, what would so-and-so do? And so it actually worked really well. So we created a virtual campus with virtual characters, and they have a progress dashboard. So here we're dovetailing the historical values as they learn about the founders of Sigma Chi with modern day problems as they go around the campus. So as they learn about each of the founders, they're able to unlock them from the bottom. On the left, we have the Sigma Chi insignia, and they earn pieces of that as they demonstrate that they can apply the values <clears throat> in a modern day setting. Off to the right, what you're seeing is that at any time they can get help by looking at Sigma Chi's policy or getting some help from the Brotherhood. So these are just some examples. We still integrated the historical information. We found ways to make it fun to kind of review it. This is the digital magazine. As they come to the digital magazine, anything that they launch is a different piece of content. So we have, we might have embedded video. We might have a story about when this particular leader stood up for their values. We might have a video snippet. I'll show a couple of those. This is a quote. Have a little video. <clears throat> and then it moves into the modern day application. So there's a scenario or a setup between the 3D characters. And then they have to make a decision about how they're going to handle it, You know what they think that the modern day character should do. So what would you do? And you have those same resources to consult. So rather than dragging them through the policy, we let them use it as a resource for this values-based decision making. Now, someone might be tempted to just ignore it, but again, we've incented precision by having them auto-fail at 75%. So they're incented to review it and to, to apply it. These are examples of what the resources look like. At the end of this program, they then take time to reflect on each of the values and they record it, they have a journal. And so this is something that they do by hand. And these courses are preparation for a classroom experience, as Brian may have mentioned. Um, so they have the opportunity to stop and reflect. 
Brian's going to talk a little bit about the results and how this program has been received, and then we're going to move on to the social media case study. Yeah, so since this program launched uh, this past August, um, we've had a number, a, a, probably a couple dozen member schools go through it. We've received on the four different individual courses within it about 4,800 feedback responses. So we've got a lot of data of what they think about it. Now keep in mind that these learners hadn't seen the prior versions of this, so they don't know that it's different and an improvement. Um, we did, however, in, in the past, uh, believe me, 18 to 19 year olds are not shy about an, an anonymous feedback form telling us what they really think. And we got a lot of, this is boring, yawn, why am I doing this? Or they just left it blank. Um, and now we're seeing responses where they're not necessarily commenting. There are definitely a good number of comments about the look and feel and the design, but since they don't really realize the difference, that's not what they're focusing on. Um, what they, they're talking now about, um, we've never seen comments before where they're actually talking about the content. In their feedback, they're talking about the content itself. I really love this piece of information. I love this founder. I love hearing about this historical thing. And while we can't necessarily quantify it, this has to relate to knowledge retention. Uh, they're actually paying attention to this stuff, and that's what they're commenting on instead of, this sucks, why am I doing it? Um, one of the things that we can quantify is we have seen an increased number in uh, increased percentage of pledge retention. So that's pledges that uh, um, join and then make it all the way through to initiation and then continue to be members after that. So we know that it's increasing our pledge retention. Uh, we also know that our uh, number of hazing incidents has gone down. So by standardizing this and getting them to understand values and beliefs and things of that nature, it's it's taking away that opportunity where they've had before where uh, it was kind of a free-for-all and they're not really necessarily learning about the things they're supposed to, which, you know, if you don't give them structure, that's where the negative things start to happen. So by giving them this structure that they can relate to and are paying attention to, we are definitely seeing a decrease in negative behavior and that's fantastic for us. Okay, thank you, Brian. So we're gonna go on and talk about officer training. Um, <clears throat> this one was cool because we decided to go digital for it. So we have um, not only digital formats, but we also tried to make our interactions look like apps. This is where the poop emoji comes in. So I know you guys have like been waiting for it. It's embedded right here. Um, officer training, if you want to talk about that, Brian, is it's role-based. So the officers of the chapter each have different roles that they need to perform. And this helps to set them up for just the basics behind their role. So to treat this, what we did is we came up with a modern character who is their age. <coughs> and his name is Derek. And he appears throughout each one, of, uh, each one of the courses as a different character. And he presents himself as a learning agent that's peer-based. And so rather than have this formal push down, he's like, hey, I used to be this role in the chapter. I'm going to give you the real story about how it's done and the real story about the things that I struggled with. And then they do it through like exploring his Instagram account. Oh yeah, this is when I had to do the such and such. And then occasionally we ask them to make judgment decisions on it. So um, this is the one where we had to call all our younger brothers and sisters and ask them how Tinder worked because we didn't want our spouses to see that we downloaded Tinder. And oh, it's for work, honey, it's for work. Um, but we gave it a digital look and feel. We have several social media interactions and then we also integrated some memes. So I'll show you what that looks like. So each of the, each of the courses is structured the same way. Very roles and responsibility and policy based. This is Derek, he's our digital character and he appears in a wide variety, he's kind of our Ken doll. We dress him up all the time and have him look different. This is an example of one of the memes. Now again, because this is role based training, do you guys remember when these memes were circulating? And it was like, what other people think I do, what my mom thinks I do, what I think I do. And so it was just kind of a fun way to cover some of the misconceptions that people might have about what this person does in the chapter. I think this one is funny because the console is kind of the policy guy. So over here where it's like what my brothers think I do, he's sitting there screaming the policies at them. And so we're going to talk about all those things, but then it's, then we're going to get down to what you actually do. And I think people like this because, <clears throat> do you guys, do you guys, anybody here follow Roger Shank? I love Roger Shank, and I wish he did more in the corporate space, but he's kind of like collegiate. I love you, Roger Shank, if you're here. He talks about violation of expectation, and I, it's one of, one of the most valuable parts 
the most, one of the most valuable ways to think about e-learning design because when people come into an experience, they have a certain expectation. They've kind of already decided how much attention they're going to give you. They've already decided kind of what value this holds. But when you come in and you violate their expectation, either through what they experience or what they see or how you involve them, you get to reset all of that. And they get more engaged. And they're like, oh, maybe I've written this off. Maybe I need to get a little bit more engaged. And they open up and they give you more of their discretionary attention. And things like this, where we started off a course like this, you can see right away it's a violation of expectation. No one's going to expect to see this here. And now we have more of their mental playing field. Here's an example of a modification of, I think I went back, of Instagram. So he's going through and saying, hey, here's some things that I've done over the past year as I've served in this role, which I'm now handing to you. So they're able to scroll through his Instagram feed and see captions on photos to really try to make it brief. I don't think this mouse is always working. This is one that they really like. So this is kind of a sticker activity. If you guys are familiar with like uh, Instagram and the photo filter and how you can do you know, the little deer ears and the stickers. So this is an interaction where they're still in Instagram, but they're labeling each of the things that they see with a sticker to decide whose job is that. Is it the, this is another thing we had fun with, Brian, is trying to figure out how to pronounce these words. So it's like quaster. <laughs> Quaster, is it the Quaster's job? Is it the console's job? Who is it? We also wanted to use Tinder, but we couldn't get the swiping in on the computer, obviously, so we converted that to a heart and to an X. <clears throat> but you'll notice how simple these screens are. They're not overloaded with text. They don't want to see that. They're very, very simple, and then we're getting them involved and we're asking them to make decisions. And then they get feedback and they move on and apply another standard. Another big thing that we know we're all into, but especially as we go down the generations, is texting. In fact, one of the education pieces in these courses is helping them understand when not to text. Um, but this interaction lets them text somebody to resolve an issue. So they're choosing what to say and choosing a strategy, and then they get feedback about it as the text message builds. This is an augmented reality interaction. So they're moving their iPad around a particular scene. We have some of these where they come into the aftermath of a party. And they're able to see uh, through augmented reality some different areas of the party that they can explore to learn more about what went wrong or what should have been done. Um, this is an example of a blood, uh, blood drive. And again, you can just see how short these snippets are. This is an Instagram video, so we embedded some little videos, similar to reviewing the pictures, but it feels like an Instagram story. Here's our poo emoji. So they're making a series of decisions here about how to handle problems that come up, and you can see this one's about communication. Should you handle this over a text message? Should you do this face-to-face? -face? <coughs> Excuse me, and they get a lot of feedback. Um, I like the one that uh, says, don't be allergic to the phone, the feedback that they get. This one is Twitter. So a chapter had an incident and something went out on Twitter and now people are making comments about it. So as an officer of the chapter, how are you gonna handle that and how should you respond? But we're having them do that by deciding what to post on Twitter and that it actually shows up and they get feedback from the Sigma Chi Twitter account. Um, and Brian's gonna talk about the results of officer training. This is our social media themed course. Yeah, before I do that, just a quick anecdote about some of the fun we have working with eLearning Brothers. You saw the officer character, Derek. Um, one of uh, the younger women that, women that, uh, that works for us uh, got the opportunity to, uh, she's in charge of working with the committee that does officer training. She was in charge of designing Derek. Uh, so they worked with eLearning Brothers people to come up with what the ideal gentleman would look like, possibly. Probably about three weeks after Derek became a thing, she found... Uh, a gentleman who she's now dating who looks exactly like Derek and his name is Eric. So, um, but yeah, that was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, one of the things that they really respond to well, like we said, is the social media design. I mean, we're speaking to them using the iPhone and the, the iPad or the tablet and phone. Uh, that's what they use every day. It's what they respond to. It's what they understand. Uh, the feedback we've received from this is overwhelmingly positive that it looks 
uh, like it speaks to their generation. Um, as we mentioned earlier, the gray area scenarios is really what spoke to them. Uh, they're so used to hearing uh, in anything they might get from their college or university of the extreme situations where there really only is one right thing to do or it doesn't necessarily apply to them every day if they're doing things well anyway. And that's, you know, if somebody needs to go to the hospital or, uh, you know, somebody has broken into the chapter house. It's just not stuff that happens all the time. What they really appreciate is that these are scenarios and um, ideas that they really, really encounter all the time and they love it. Um, in the past, historically, so this uh, program gets given to the officers that attend our summer leadership training workshop. Uh, we've always done surveys, post-session uh, surveys, to see what they retain and what they, uh, how comfortable they feel with the content and material. Uh, Prior to this year, which is the first year this launched, we had uh, confidence numbers in of their understanding of the material, if they either agree or strongly agree that they understand the material, has been hovering around 84%, and the same for if they're comfortable taking this back to the chapter to give it to their members and get them to understand it as well. Uh, this year, after this program was introduced, this version with the eLearning Brothers Touch, it's up to about 93%. So we saw about a 9% increase in their comfortability and of understanding the material and to be able to take it back to their chapters to give it to the other members. Thank you. And you want to talk about compliance training, Brian? I kind of stole your intro last time, but... No, no problem at all. Um, so compliance training is getting them to understand the things that they need to know about our rules and policies and the laws. Uh, these are incredibly important pieces because, you know, there's a huge liability issue involved here. Besides that, we want them to know what they are expected to do. Um, in terms of policies about uh, hazing, alcohol, sexual misconduct. There's a, a world of different things that we need them to understand. And what we had done previously was they get a piece of paper that says, I understand the rules and policies of Sigma Chi fraternity. Here's the rules and policies. Now check this box and give us your signature. Well, they don't get anything out of that, obviously, but that's the way it's been done for years. And so that's what we've still been doing. What we really needed to do was get them... Um, uh, a way to make sure that they were truly exposed to different materials and scenarios that they could encounter. And then when they're checking that box at the end and signing off that, yes, I've done it, it's because they've done this program and they, we know that they've at least had exposure to it. Now, this is another program that just launched this past August. Uh, what we're hoping to see, uh, I'll get to results more in a minute, but um, yeah, we'll say that for results. Go ahead. Mr. Okay. The results are good. <laughs> So um, the way the approach that we decided to take to, take with this, and we didn't want to go overkill because they are just pretty basic policies, code of conduct, but we wanted to take a more visual approach. So we chose to do a graphic novel treatment, and we left it open to them. And I'll show you in a minute what the main menu looks like. We left it open, and they can kind of explore around and do what they want as long as they all get it done. Then we embedded the, the policies and let them do the acknowledgement within the system. And then we tried to come up with these really creative knowledge checks. So that's where the alcohol cornhole came in. And I'll show you some other. I mean, that's like the highlights. It's kind of like the movie reel, right? Where sometimes the best jokes. I kind of already told you the best one. It's alcohol cornhole. But I have other examples. <clears throat> so you can see already that this one looks a little bit different. We've integrated this comic book kind of feel. This is the main menu. So they get to go around and explore. You notice the drug stores, the alcohol and drugs, and code of conduct, and all of that stuff. Each of the chapters then proceeds to have a narrative about what this policy is about and why it's important and how it applies to them and their conduct um, within the chapter. And so it's an animated presentation. This is where we embedded the acknowledgments and policies. And then we moved into the knowledge checks. And again, these are still done in the comic book style. So this one is a multiple select. But it's just, you guys, this isn't like a, it's, it's not a big difference. It's still a multi-select question. It just looks different. So it just doesn't seem as boring um, by pulling all of that into the visual, same visual style. This is just a drag and drop. And you know what's interesting is this actually, is, these are relatively challenging. Even when I went through to do the screenshots, I had to pay pretty close attention. They really do make sure that you've, you've gotten the essence of what's there. This was an interesting one um, because it is like a story. And then they're choosing what's going to happen next. What's the next frame of the, of the comic book in order to make their choice? 
this is a sorting. So what is hazing? And they're sorting each one of these to show that they know what it is and what it is not. This is another drag and drop for terms. And another them selecting the next frame as part of the story. Here's alcohol cornhole. This is actually a pretty challenging game. <laughs> So this runs in a series of setups um, because the alcohol, and Brian, maybe you want to speak to this a little bit, but the alcohol policy has some complexity to it that this game helps to reinforce. Do you want to speak to that a little bit? I'm, I'm sorry, I missed what you said, that alcohol has a... Well, so for example, um, with pledge activities. Oh, so, okay. you know, yeah. Yeah, so um, there... We have a, a world of different alcohol policies out there. So during uh, the recruitment period where they're uh, trying to find new members, as well as when the members are pledges, the houses are supposed to be completely dry. Uh, you can't have any parties or social events with alcohol. Uh, no alcohol can be involved in any of those activities. The, the rules change once that period is over. Uh, so there's, that's what the different scenarios are through. The questions at the top, when can you have this? Um, is that what you're getting at? Yeah, okay. yeah, absolutely. Um, and so what they do is for each particular context that's presented to them, they drag the bean bag in if that type of alcohol is allowed at that particular event to show that they know. Um, and they, they've really liked it. We've had a lot of good feedback about it. They've liked the activity. This is the, and then the main menu just keeps track of their progress as they go until eventually they complete it. And Brian will talk about the results. Yeah, so um, the visuals and the graphics in this are really what speaks to them. As, as many of you know, in any space, if you're creating compliance training, it can be some of the most boring stuff any of your people will ever go through. Um, having that interactive campus map with that great 3D graphic where they can go around and learn about different policies, they absolutely love that aspect of it. They love the graphic novel piece, the games themselves uh, that the, we still get. We, the most commented thing, obviously, is that uh, cornhole game for alcohol. They originally uh, came up with a scenario where it was uh, going to be a beer pong game. That's what eLearning Brothers said and our executive director said, no. So no beer but pong. that's the kind of creativity they have. That's probably one of the few times we've actually ever told eLearning Brothers no. But, Do you want to uh, talk about beer pong? Give us a call. Yeah. It was a, <laughs> they have some great ideas uh, for those games. Um, so again, since this launch, this uh, this past August, just a couple of months ago, we don't have any hard data results in terms of outside of uh, just the feedback from the students that have been taking it. The idea here is that if we're giving them true exposure and true understanding of the policies they need to know, that the number of incidents where they're violating those policies will go down. And that's something we keep very, very close track of. Um, uh, no tolerance in a lot of this stuff. And so uh, that's what we're hoping to see is that as a result of this, the results of any cases that come from a college or university or a chapter itself that reach our standards and conduct boards uh, continues to decrease. That's our hope. Yeah, thank you. The last case study that we wanted to share with you is from um, a course series called Strong Arms. This course is near and dear and has a much more serious tone that I'll let Brian introduce kind of the purpose and where this course came from. And what we want to share with you is less of a theme for this one and more about how we integrated with their technology to help um, supplement their learning experience. Yeah, this one definitely has a much more serious note to it. Um, uh, one of the things that we know uh, just by pulling college campuses and figuring out is that you know, an overwhelming majority, 90% plus of students go through alcohol education from their college or university and they don't necessarily need to get it from us. We'll, we'll still continue to give it to them in a different form that speaks to them. They get alcohol education, they get sexual misconduct orientation. Something about like 13, 14% of college students report that they actually get any kind of training or information about mental health. Now given the state of what we know goes on on college campus today, that's absolutely unacceptable to us and that's something we need to address. Uh, the Strong Arms program was uh, Took, took shape about a couple of years ago. We had an, an alumni brother whose uh, son was a Sigma Chi pledge and tragically committed suicide. And uh, just from the stresses of everyday college campuses, and that's something that we see, at, at, unfortunately, way too much of. I mean, we lose more brothers to suicide than we do to alcohol every single year. We need to address this. Um, this uh, gentleman who lost his son came to us and said, why aren't you guys doing anything about this? 
let's get something done. And we've been working with him. He was uh, very, very generous in funding this program, uh, which is very wide ranging. Um, it speaks to not just suicide prevention, but all aspects of mental health and wellness of what it means to be a college student. These guys are out on their own for the very first time. They don't have the guidance of their parents. Uh, they don't necessarily know how to handle that. And so we needed to have a program that teaches them uh, you know, how to keep healthy, how to think well, and how to identify the resources that are available to them. Um, one of the tragic things out of the story that the, son, the gentleman lost his son was he made five different phone calls to different various people and couldn't get anybody to either pick up the phone or could find a, some sort of a hotline that could help him five different phone calls before he took his own life. So we've made a partnership with the Jed Foundation uh, with mental health, um, uh, the mental health specialty, specialty uh, where we have something now where if somebody calls our hotline number or sends a text to, uh, to their hotline number, they will get a re response from a live person, a trained mental health pro professional within 20 seconds. They get instant access to the, the help that they need right away. And that's where the technology integration comes in. We needed to promote this, and we needed a, needed a way where our brothers, uh, our members, are aware of this and would actually be able to use it. And that's integrated into the Strong Arms program, as Misty will show you. Thanks, Brian. So within the program, we wanted them to have an opportunity to do self-reflection, um, which we'll show a little bit of. We also built in an email integration we have built-in text functionality to have things texted to them and um, integration with their calendaring. From that health and wellness perspective, we have them plan some activities and then actually pop them right into their calendar on their smartphone from the course. So here's an example of what Brian was talking about with the lifeline. So they learn about this hotline that they can call and have access to, but then write, because what, what are you going to do about it? Do you think someone's going to take the time to write that number down right then? They're not. And so here, we say, hey, do you want this information? We'll send it to your cell phone. <clears throat> we do the same type of thing later on. Um, so here, here's another kind of reflection plan. So they've learned about how important sleep is, and now they're going to set some goals for themselves. And we're tracking this information, I think, Brian, we talked about. There's some, of, some additional information from the course, and we didn't build this into the presentation, that we're tracking for them and then letting them run reports on. So we set up back-end reporting for that as well. Here's an example about some commitments. So enter your commitments in the boxes provided on the screen and click Submit. So this is where they're doing a little bit of their action planning around health and wellness. And then we're going to email that to them. You can set these emails up. Um, to occur, I mean, you can get the email immediately, right? But you can also get it in a month, or two months, or three months. Hey, Jenny, remember those promises you made to yourself about sleep? How are those going? You know, and you have this information, you know what goals they're setting, and you can kind of surface that back up to them. Here's an example of a blank calendar. On the left, what you're seeing are some of the health and wellness topics that were discussed in the course, and, or, you know, ideas, right? And then they can drag that over to their calendar and start to plan. You know, how, am I going to get some exercise in? How often am I going to do that? So the course actually lets them take some time to think about it, and then it'll export out um, as an ICS and link up with their calendar on their smartphone. And Brian's going to talk about results. Yeah, so again, this is something that just launched at our summer uh, leadership conference this past August. Um, what we really want to do with the data is the collected is see if our members feel like they are more or less stressed than an average college student. We can take lots of empirical data from different studies that have been done to see if what we are doing or what we are asking them to do is has a, a negative impact on their mental health or does it have a positive impact on their mental health. We really don't know. We've never examined it before, so that's something we're going to start doing. Um, the other thing uh, that we're hopefully obviously making them do is as uh, with that partnership with the Jed Foundation, it's in the Strong Arms program, is they have something that is specific to their particular campus. So they can click on it and it'll say, here's your campus mental health center, here's who you can contact, here's some local resources, here's a hospital, et cetera, things of that nature, where they definitely will have that information um, and that's available to them in the program itself as well as on a specific website that we've developed for them. Thank you. So we want to open it up for any questions that you have, but just, just in closing, um, I don't know what you guys expected to see, but I hope what you're walking away with is 
you don't have to have super duper fancy technology. I mean, we did use Unity and ClickSend and a few of these other things to do the technological integrations or the, the 3D characters. But a lot of what we've done here is our things that you can do. We just put a different packaging on it and a more mindful design to help it feel more relevant to their generation. We just need to break out a little bit of what we're used to and what we're comfortable with and try to wrap it in a new package that's more appealing to them. And sometimes that's cutting it down, it's simplifying it, it's making it micro learning, it's helping it to be more social or it's helping it to be more blended. Um, but it's to show also that just that we're mindful of what their experience is and to help give them um, training that feels like it's fit for what their experience is. So I hope that's what you're walking away with. Thanks very much.